the technologies that we have when it comes to low latency, there's ingest protocols or muxers. Uh, they're not necessarily synonymous, but WebRTC is more of a transport layer. Uh, it's not necessarily a specific way to mux audio and video, although uh, like HLS is, it's a wrapper that muxes audio and video together. Uh, but when it comes to server ingest, we've got low latency protocols. NDI, of course, had a huge boost during COVID because a lot of production workflows went to full NDI. People using NDI within their own cloud, uh, 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 private lands on the cloud, and uh, using NDI, of course, on location or coming out of Teams or Zoom. Uh, NDI is a very popular um, uh, license free, for the most part, uh, low latency, ultra low latency way to get video around. That's can be uncompressed or compressed, depending on what flavor of NDI you're using. RTSP, UDP, that's more with the, the, the kind of security cameras, traffic cams out there. Again, we get all sorts of audiences here. I'm not presuming you all come from media and entertainment. So when it comes to municipality live streaming, I, I do work for uh, various municipalities in British Columbia and uh, across the Uni United States. I've worked with the uh, city of Colorado Springs, uh, a few municipalities in California working specifically with their traffic cams and they want low latency on that too. Most of those cameras are IP cameras that are Axis or another vendor like Axis and those are all RTSP pulls from those cameras into an infrastructure that hopefully won't add much more latency on top of it. And of course RTMP, Flash has been around for a long time and it's gone but RTMP is its legacy that even Facebook and YouTube today still use for uh, for ingest. So if you're doing a live stream on those platforms, you probably already know the latency is pretty high um, because we it's not just staying in that transport. We can't do RTMP out anymore. We can do RTMP in. Um, that stands for real-time messaging protocol uh, back from the flash days. Uh, and it is, I think, gradually going to be phased out. But because there's such an infrastructure investment on top of RTMP, I don't think it's going to go away next year or the year after that. RTMP is probably going to be a legacy protocol that sticks around. And it can actually be pretty low latency. Uh, I mean, even in the ultra low latency, and I'll go back to that slide in just a second that I skipped to from Wowza uh, that Ryan had up on his deck too. Uh, that basically refers to tuning all of these different protocols and, and muxers that might be out there. So for server ingest, I put the popular ones on uh, the left-hand side. Actually, it's missing SRT. I don't know how that got chopped off, but uh, SRT should be on the server ingest. In fact, I'll put it back in before I upload it. Um, SRT, of course, is, uh, was um, pushed by High Vision. It's open source, and SRT is becoming quickly a popular replacement to RTMP, particularly if you're using a codec that's not H.264. If you want to start using modern codecs like HEVC or AV1, you're not going to be able to use RTMP very easily uh, to do that. I know uh, Yuri, who's been walking around from Softvellum, uh, I know he's adapted an RTMP variant that will work with other codecs, but that's very specific to infrastructure that his company's been working on. Uh, client delivery, of course, is how we're consuming these streams, not just how a server might be talking to a point of origin or uh, a remote location. For client delivery, we've got our, our standard uh, HTTP delivery with HLS Dash and CMAF variants of that. WebRTC, of course, is there for client delivery as well. And we still have WebSocket services out there. I'm pretty sure Nano Cosmos, who usually has a booth here, they're based out of Europe. Um, they're, uh, they, uh, they're, their tagline was around the world in about a second. Uh, they used WebSockets for that uh, playback mechanism. So WebSockets wasn't necessarily uh, an end-to-end -end delivery for them. It was a client delivery that was easier to scale than WebRTC. So you still see some WebSocket implementations. WebSockets have been around in browsers for a long, long time. And it's just a generic socket. You can send whatever you want over a WebSocket. Data, audio, video, uh, and it, it's not necessarily an easy protocol to work with. Uh, it because it was, again, not necessarily designed around video and uh, uh, audio and video uh, uh, sending around the web like WebRTC was. Um, I'm going to pull up this graphic again that uh, Ryan showed it this morning at uh, the Dolby keynote. Um, and Wowza had this on their, their blog, uh, and it's a really great representation of just how the same 
uh, ways of delivery fall across this uh, graphic in any number of ways. Uh, you'll see that what we'll call default Apple, HL, uh, Apple HLS has around 30 seconds of latency typically. Uh, they put it down in the 18 plus seconds of latency column. I would say your average uh, HLS latency is 30 seconds, mainly because people are using 10 second chunk sizes and a three chunk playlist. So you do the math, three times 10, not including any kind of delays between those chunks being delivered across uh, CDNs or whatnot, you're looking at 30 seconds. And it's not too hard to reduce that latency down to six seconds. You'll see under HLS tuned, Wowza put it just after five seconds, and you could get a two second uh, chunk size and keyframe interval times three. Again, if you start minimizing your chunk sizes, just multiply it by the number of chunks that are listed in the manifest. That gives you your average latency. It's, you, you're going to add some time to that too, just because of transports uh, between edge, edges um, and your origin potentially. But I would say, you know, if you have a two, two second uh, segment size and it's uh, on a playlist that's repeated three times, then you're probably looking anywhere from six to ten uh, seconds of latency in a tuned playlist like that. And that's not hard to do. Anyone who's got a media server can tune their uh, their packaging to that and not have to go through many jumps and um, uh, not too many hoops to do that. Um, as we get closer though to this sub one second latency, we start to get into more uh, different uh, technologies like WebRTC, you can see, is first and foremost in this near real time. We're, we're closer to that 250 milliseconds that I showed you with that uh, Janus and Wirecast test. You know, generally speaking, I would I, I think most people are looking to achieve under 500 milliseconds, if not under 300 milliseconds of latency when they're using a, um, WebRTC. And of course, as I'll talk about in a bit, um, there's a cost. Uh, uh, associated with that. WebRTC doesn't scale as easily as any of these HTTP methods of delivery, so you're going to have to budget accordingly, whether it's building out your own WebRTC infrastructure, using someone else's. Um, we now have, of course, low latency HLS that's been out for a number of years now. Uh, I remember when Richard Pantos came to this streaming media west, not this one, but the one I think just prior to COVID, um, one of the last streaming media west, and he was talking about low latency HLS, like for the very first time at the conference. And so we've had some time over COVID to see how that's going to evolve. Um, the original low latency HLS spec had some HTTP2 uh, version 2 specific put commands in it, and that they've since removed it so that CDNs don't have to use it, and instead they're using um, uh, this preload hint that you can put into uh, manifests that are specifically uh, low latency HLS. So I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and of course, you could tune any of the others like RTMP. I use, uh, if you're building a smartphone app, uh, I worked with a uh, I don't know if you guys remember the days of HQ Trivia. It was a pretty massively popular trivia game. I don't even know if it's still around. I haven't checked. But um, I had a couple of clients that were trying to go uh, get on that same bandwagon. And we were using RTMP libraries in native apps to to play RTMP in a smartphone app. So if you're building your own customized playback technology, then you have a lot more options still if it's not going to be strictly within the domain of the browser. So um, RTMP could be an option for playback if you were building a custom environment for it. These days, I wouldn't put too much weight into RTMP playback just because we've got options that are a lot more mature now, like WebRTC. Now that um, even just a few years ago, WebRTC what doesn't ha didn't have the, the kind of cross-platform and cross-browser acceptance and uh, standards that we have now. We got Now you don't have to worry so much about H.264 versus VP8. Those are still codecs that are in place play that might need some transcoding back and forth depending on your workflows, but uh, it's come a long way, um, uh, and again, COVID accelerating that. Mm -hmm.